All right, back to testing the appease draw here. Well, I always hold appeasement. So then do I hold baboon? Do I hold these other cards? Because, I mean, a two-mana geb is pretty insane, right? And that's my three-mana turn, and then baboon would be my four-mana turn. So I think I hold that card. And then I mulligan those, because this is my four mana turn. And then I'm against Odin. So execute's not exactly my priority. This could be very, very tricky. I don't feel like I have any kind of matchup against Odin. I'm going to coin appeasement first turn, I think. Because then I can baboon into oh, man it only hits three cards though it feels so bad <clears throat> but I can't poke his Odin right let's see what I draw if I draw something super low in value then I might not because that coin might be useful later oh that is not low value right there <laughs> So we're just gonna we're gonna take some damage because I like it. I mean, realistically, I'm here one, two, one, two, three. Four. I can't hit this stone anyway, so no point. And now I've got a four mana Anubis, followed by a four mana Ritual Tribute. The Anubis is 100% coming down unless there is literally nothing that he plays. And even then, I think I might play it. It's a hard sell to say that the... Well, I mean, Geb's coming down next turn, or the Raw. But then on turn, on the 4-mana turn, because next turn's the 3-mana turn, it'll certainly be Anubis, most likely. Yeah, that's looking pretty Anubable. So do I Geb? I think I Geb. It's a bigger body that um, can help delay stone death, which is always going to be good in this particular matchup. Just give my stones as much HP as they can possibly hold. Of course, the other option is Ra, because then I can get in a better position to Anubis. So now that I think about it, Ra might have been the correct choice. But if he moves here, then I can just Anubis here and hit three anyway, most likely. He's probably not going to spawn something there. But it's possible, I guess. Can he see my cursor? I don't think you can see the opponent's cursor when it's not your turn. So I'm not giving away anything. But just in case, I'm going to squiggle it around some, you know. <clears throat> If you can, that's going to be something I want to watch. I'll have to check that out next turn. I feel like I would have seen it by now, though, if it is a thing. Oh, if he doesn't move the Surter, this is going to be seriously good for me. Even just doing 3 damage and rooting the Thor, even if I don't kill it. Okay, so now here's a reasonable question, right? So Anubis is coming down, but do I want to hit these two, or do I want to hit these two? And how much damage do they represent? I think I want to root the Surtur. Well, the Surtur then dies, so isn't that better? Yeah, I think it's better to kill the Surtur. I'm going to play my Anubis over here. Because, wait, do I? One, two, versus here. Actually, here's better, isn't it? But then it doesn't hit everything. Ha! Huh. If I play it here, it wouldn't. It would hit here. So I need to play it here. And 
And then my Geb is going to smack the Surtur, right? To remove potentially two damage from the board. And this Thor can't move. So he can't get to my Gooby. Or my Geb, for that matter. Or my Stones. Now, if one of these guys dies, I can just, boom, Ritual Tribute it, and guarantee you get a good result. So I think I want to hold these Sobeks. Sobek might be cut from this deck. I feel like Sobek just can be so good. Oh, wow. Okay, so the reason why I say, oh, wow, is because he's playing to my Annihilation turn on turn 5 after using an Appeasement. But I would have had to have it in hand, and the chances of that are fairly low. So that, that is a good play. Force me to have an answer that, that I likely don't have. You're ready, buddy. Okay. Well, I think... I think I ward while I can. So Geb is killing the 4-1. Well, 5-1 now, right? And you're going to punch Odin. So there's really two lines here. I can Ra heal, or I can ward. And then Sobek. How much do I value that to health? I actually value it quite a lot, because that could save the stone. Because then it forces him to do 10 damage rather than 8, and he's already got 8. Buff, attack, attack. So I think the heal is actually correct. If he has 2 damage, then that's very good for him, and he can kill that stone, but then it's going to die anyway. So, I want to force him to use that damage to kill that stone. And if he kills my Geb, I can just Ritual Tribute it next turn. Oh, and my Anubis is out of range of Loki. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah. <clears throat> Which is another reason why I didn't move it. Just didn't think to say it. Oh, I forgot to look and see if I could see his cursor on my turn. Fate. Okay. I mean, he hit two pretty good targets with it. I think that heal on that stone is going to be very relevant. Fenrir is not too scary. He's trying to decide whether or not to kill to kill my Geb or kill the stone. I think actually pushing stone damage there might not be incorrect. Geb is the obvious play, right? Oh, that's a dead Fenrir, right? I think that's a execute on the Fenrir this turn before it gets out of hand. There's not really much to execute in this deck, so I, I think that's correct. The only other target would be Ymir. Loki needs to die. And... One, two, three... So yeah, he's going to hit me no matter what. I'd rather be pushed up into the choke point. Going into the 7 mana turn is Odin. I still have both of my stones up, and I have board control. Um, he didn't draw any, any hunter cards or any real buff cards. That's a fire imp. 
If he removes Anubis, I'm not bothered at all. Of course, if he removes Ra, I'm not bothered at all either. I would just rather him remove Anubis in the case that I draw appeasement because I will want to appeasement my Ra, not my Anubis. So that's fine. He just spent, you know, four mana to deal three damage. And that's a Surtur. I think he could have just... He could have just Surtur instead of hero-powering the Fire Imp. It's a small misplay on his part. Do I Annihilation here? It doesn't look half bad on paper. I can remove his whole board. I can't heal my stone, but I think that's okay. What are my other lines? It would be ward into ritual tribute, right? Which doesn't remove anything. Having a Surtur on board can be very dangerous, especially if he's got a soul. I think I annihilation this. And I'd rather be towards... I'm going to stay right in the middle. <clears throat> I keep forgetting to look to see if I can see his cursor. So i got to think I can't, because it's kind of like big and red and all over the place. Thor? Curious that he didn't play Odin. Because you kind of need the Odin ability in Norse. If you're playing an Odin deck, like you really need it to get up in their face. I'll have eight mana next turn. Fire Amp kills the stone. Unfortunate. But I think Ra and then into heal is always incorrect there. So I can live with that. It took him a lot of resources to do that 10 damage to kill that stone. Well, it wasn't really 10 in the end, but, you know. Well, I think I uh, ward and then appeasement this turn. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's just always the play whenever you have appeasement. It means I have 5 mana. So I could feasibly play a Sobek. I think I'll play the Sobek way far in the back. Or I could appease with the Sobek, actually. Hmm. Is that a play? Well, obviously it's a play. Is it a correct play? No, because I moved Ra into range of Thor because I was planning on appeasementing it anyway. So I will play the Sobek. Will I? Actually, I can Ritual Tribute this turn. Or I can Baboon. Hmm. I think the 4 attack line out of the Geb would be more valuable than the 3 attack out of the Baboon. There we are. It can kill Thor now. Thor can deal 6. Calder can deal um, 3. So they could remove it if he's got a Scotty in hand. But he hasn't showed me Scotty yet. Well, Thor can do... Thor can do uh, 10, or not 10. Thor can actually do 7 if he was able to be here and then get Odin abilityed. So he could actually remove it without a Scotty next turn. But I'm just going to kill the Thor. So, Hey, I was a little afraid of the Ymir. And now he is here. The Ymir can kind of stunlock me since I mostly play one odds of big minions. So Ymir can be pretty tricky to deal with. And I already used an Execute. Um, I believe this is the deck I run two Executes, though. Yep, 
Yes, it is. That's good for me, actually. Because that was going to be my turn. So he's done my turn for me. <laughs> um, let's see here. Well, I'm pretty sure I always... Do I always attack Ymir, actually? I'm going to attack one of them, right? That's not a bad position to be in, because I want to do... Ra here, has risen once again. Baboon here, so I'm going to play one, two, I kind of want to kill it on the Calder, so I'm going to attack the Ymir. This way the Ymir can't get to anything squishy, either my Ra or my Baboon. You can only kill Sobex or a Geb. And the real value with the stun is when you deal less damage than it takes to kill an enemy. Obviously if you deal enough to kill them, they aren't stunned, they're dead. So I get more value out of um, killing off my little sacrificial crocodiles. I'm not bothered if he decides to tank that to face. I mean, either way, Ymir dies to Baboon now that he buffed the Calder. Oh, not anymore, because you can now get to it. Okay, never mind. Uh, well, it still dies to heal plus Sovek. Or actually, it just dies to Departed. One, two, three. Yeah, dies to Departed. So I'm not too bothered. Hey, Execute! That's a line, actually. If I execute the Ymir... And use the departed to kill the Calder. And then I can just heal and then Sobek to kill the 4 2. And I can still play BDK or a Baboon. I think that's correct, actually. Ward is an interesting draw. I still, well, obviously, three mana. I could play it, actually. I kind of want to get more stuff on the board, though. Can I always ward next turn? since I can't play anything from it this turn? I believe the answer is yes, so the correct play is then to play the BDK. One, two, three, I can get to the stone. One, two, three, I can't get to that stone, but this way it forces him to go one, two, three around rather than one, two. A little more movement can make a difference. If he stays there, I just go here and kill his leader. If he if he spawns something there, I get more free hits. I don't think he quite understands how BDK works. Now, if he spawns something here, that would be pretty intelligent of him. Because then I can only hit these two. I can't hit the stone as well. Okay, so call to there is, is okay-ish. But I can still clear them both for free. Or I can just, you know, 
baboon that, <laughs> and then BDK for three extra damage to stone. So we'll we'll see what he does. That okay, that's a good play. It's gonna force me to. And B Baboon can't get in range of Scotty. That's a good placement, then. Well, I'm always warding, so let's ward first. Decrepit Bowman. So, Geb heal is obviously the best for Curve, and it's not looking half bad. Sticking a Geb on the BDK might actually be the winningest line. Initially, you want to Geb the stone. Well, regardless, you're moving here and killing those guys. And I kind of want him to stay by Ra. But I think they remove the Ra first anyway, so let's move him up. I play it up because I need to go that way eventually, and down here should be dealt with with Rob Baboon, and I don't see a way that he removes them both. And the BDK. <clears throat> Finrar! Have I got an 8 mana spell for you? There's zero way that he can deal with his own Fenrir, so I can just Phantom Grasp that and pretty much win for free, I'm pretty sure. I think that's always the line. I mean, your Scott, your Scotty's dead next turn, so you best hit him. <laughs> So this is coming here, so we can clear out those two units. Or, that one unit, I can count. Um, I think I might actually value killing the Odin over the stone at this stage of the game. Stone can always die later. It is more damage efficient, however, to kill the stone and then deal two damage to Odin. Is damage efficiency an issue? Either way, I'm doing that. I believe the correct line is to not be damage efficient and to kill the Odin and be damage inefficient. Because next turn, I win regardless. Unless he... I don't... Yeah, that's not going to save you. Calder is not going to do it to you. Is there a way to win from this board state? Yes. Alright. GG. Definitely getting the feel for a peas Ra just a little bit more. It's certainly in a very, very, very slow deck. And I feel like I have not been up against the greatest Odin decks here. Of course, there's an error joining the queue. Let's try again. This bug again. Okay, I remember this bug from Alpha. 
when you couldn't join Q and you just had to mash the button a bunch and then eventually you joined Q. Alright, looks like I get to reload.